It's the same light you get in those blue car headlights. So, um, here you are. We're going to struggle, I suspect, we can have the lights back up, um, to actually light the latest movie or whatever. But nevertheless, it's really quite neat that you can get light in that rough, peculiar sort of way. Now, we've had Xenon. Um, now, I should somewhere or other point out that various people have been using two elements together, again, noble gases, to generate light. And that, of course, is a helium neon laser. And everybody says that the noble gases are unreactive. In fact, xenon has loads. And helium and neon together, they form an excimer complex. And that's what actually gives you uh, that amazing light. So they do react. But where else can we get light from? Well, we talked about mercury earlier. I brought some mercury. Um, I came up on the train with it. And I've got a little bottle. Um, does anyone want some? I've got a liter. It's about 14 kilos. Um, it's, it's there. You can see it kind of shiny and lovely. We'll, we'll, we'll put it on the table here. Um, well, mercury is great because what it does is it gives out light. And it gives out light particularly in the ultraviolet part of the spectrum. Um, you can also get bluish and greenish light in the street lights you see outside are, are mercury lights. But here's some mercury light. Turn the lights down. You'll notice that it does something really rather uncanny to the paper. And of course, to my shirt here which mentions several elements, some of which may mention, some of which haven't. But I'd like to, to, draw, to draw your attention to the banknotes I have here. These are euros. And you see the way they light up. Which element would you put in your euros? Well, of course, you put europium. And that's europium in the three plus oxidation state that gives the red and the yellow, and in the two plus oxidation state, giving the blue and the green. Um, ironically, the Bank of England started putting uh, europium into the currency several years ago. And I kind of wonder if this is part of, I don't know, Gordon Brown's attempt to move the pound closer to the euro. Okay, so uh, the europium, um, I should mention here, we've got some glass courtesy of Dallas Campbell. This is uranium glass. And you'll notice it glows in the dark. It has nothing to do with its radioactivity. It's the same as the europium. All we're doing is we're making it for us. And beside it are a couple of other nice um, sort of uh, heavy elements from the periodic table. Here we've got, uh, you may be able to see some glows in there. No, you can't because I've screwed this up. I'm sorry. I've got the wrong containers for them. But there we have holmium and erbium, which, which glow really rather nicely. Um, or not, as the case may be. But holmium and erbium are extremely important in internet technology. Um, so you might get your elements on the internet, but you certainly need the elements to run the internet. All the light that runs the fiber optics is based on erbium. Um, can we have the lights back on? Because I'm now totally lost. Um, oh, yes. Um, maybe if we want to get a brighter light, we have to get a little bit hotter. And what you might want to do is to start getting some metals together and you start striking them. And you can see here this rather lovely piece of metal. This is called niche metal. It's an alloy which consists mostly of iron and cerium. And cerium is the element that runs the car exhaust catalyst uh, in your car. And alongside it is the platinum that eventually burned off all of the methanol that was in that, in that tank. Um, but carrying on, cerium, of course, is a rare earth element, and these things have been in the use. They become increasingly exp expensive, which is a complete pain in the ass for those of us who actually work with those elements, um, because our budgets are really um, suffering very, very badly. Um, I just met a man a few minutes ago who uh, claims, he says, to have a whole kilo, did you say, of thulium, which is the most expensive element, in, or the second most expensive element in the carrying table. Um, don't tell anyone where you live, um, because it might all go wrong. But then we have another rare earth element, neodymium. Neodymium combined with iron makes fantastically strong magnets, about a thousand times stronger than anything that had been made before that. And of course, the first thing you do when you have a magnet is you go and try and pick things up with it. And what might you go and pick up with it? Well, you might go and try samarium. You might try, here's the rubidium, by the way. You'll try not to drop it. No good. Titanium, completely useless. Lead, hopeless. Um, the point is, of course, magnetism has nothing to do with metals. It has everything to do with electrons. And here we have the first of our metals that actually sticks. Um, there we have nickel, tin, hopeless, iridium, hopeless. Um, titanium, we've had again, silver. 
Um, I've lost the metal that I really wanted. Um, let's just try some copper. Um, oh, interesting. Notice that some of the pennies stick and some of them don't. You know why? Of course, what happened was that the copper is so expensive that it's worth a lot more than one penny. So many years ago, the Bank of England debased the currency by making the uh, coins out of steel and then coating them at the tax with, with copper. Um, so you could do something illegal and get a file and scrape off the edge of a penny, and you'll see this sort of silver bit on the, on the inside. Um, but real copper, and here we have a rod, uh, will not do anything at all. Anyway, there's piles and piles of metals, and they're all kind of the same um, when you just look at them. But the chemistry, of course, is fantastic. But I think what we need to do is to move really quite swiftly on it, and we should try and see if we can do a demo in which we can combine four elements in one go. And for this demo, I think we should turn the lights down a little bit, um, because this is a quite light-sensitive demo. And what? Swift is good. Okay, I'm only going to do two more things. Okay, turn the lights down. Um, I'm going to take the first element, that's hydrogen, and uh, no, that, that, that'll do just, that's perfect. Uh, hydrogen and chlorine, and I'm going to, I have them here in this tube. And at the same time, I'm going to mix them with a little bit of, oh my god, half of it is missing. I've lost half of the kit here in the darkness. This is a disaster. <laughs> Give me one second. I'm going to dig around frantically, probably not find it. And I suspect that this isn't going to work because I've lost the silver compound that I really need. Ah, let's try this. Okay, this might, this might actually work. It might not. So I'm going to mix together a silver compound with magnesium. And when we mix those together, uh, not a lot happens, which is rather good because my hands are right there. And I'm then going to pour it into this small, and we're iron again, a little steel crucible. Steel, of course, not just iron, iron and carbon. Um, now, notice there's hydrogen and chlorine in here. We're going to make a bright light. And the hydrogen that's going to break the chlorine chlorine bonds, they're going to react to the hydrogen. The whole thing's going to get hot. Uh, remember PV equals NRT? Yep. The volume is constant, the temperature is going to rise. Um, the rubber bone. Now it's going to go there. <laughs> remember billiards. You guys. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get my specs up. And I would strongly recommend that you not watch right here. Look over, actually, no, look that way, because that's where it's going to be coming from. Are you ready? It might not work. It might not work at all. No, nope, it's not going to work. Okay, I'm having a really bad night tonight. Um, and so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to cut to the chase. First of all, I'm going to kill a lit firework, and I'm going to end off with something that will tie together several other elements and compounds. And in particular, I want to talk about nitric oxide, that molecule which Graham is convinced makes life go smoother, or at least makes things go bump in the night. Um, so here we have a tube which contains nitric oxide. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to it a crucial ingredient, and that's going to be carbon disulfide. Carbon disulfide is an exceptionally smelly molecule, and I need just under a mil of it. I'm going to put it in the top. Okay, there we go. I put it in the top there, and I'm just going to shake it up. Shake it up a little bit, just so that we've got the carbon disulfide and the NO very well mixed. Built up a little pressure. And this, like everything else tonight, may well fail. <laughs> um, many years ago, I, had a I did a demo where a couple of things failed, and I was absolutely crushed. And an elderly professor came up to me and he said, uh-uh, you should always have things fail on demo. And I said, what? And he said, yeah, he's that with no notice, not television. <laughs> Turn the lights down, please. <laughs> <laughs> talking about when burning sulfur. Okay, what is the, is the, is the carbon sulfide burns, the sulfur combines with the oxygen from the nitric oxide, and it gives out that blue light. Um, I suspect that there were some of you who shut your eyes because you were so worried about it, and so you didn't actually see it. So 
In the interest of reproducibility, which we know is fundamental to science, um, I think we should do it again. So um, here we are. We're going to take about a quarter of a mil and move this out of the way. Um, where's my Bunsen burner going on? I've lost it. I don't need it. Oh, it's on the floor. Okay, that's fine. Now, notice the brown cloud. Did anyone notice the brown cloud? Okay, well, the nitric oxide that's in the tube, NO, that's the, the signaling molecule in biology, reacts very quickly with oxygen to give you nitrogen dioxide. That's brown. And those two molecules are fairly bad news to inhale. I'm an asthmatic. It's great. Good. I'm an um, But they're exactly what the platinum in your car exhaust catalyst is designed to remove. Okay, are we ready? We're going to light it at the top. And. Right. So, tremendous flash. And you, you've heard, of course, that beautiful sound, that organ pipe sound, because, because the, the flame is, is, uh, is confined to a small space. I think we should do it again. Yeah. Just blasting. Just blasting. Um, I've got another one. I'll get this over here. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be done. Um, so, here we have. And you know, remember when you were in school?